Praise the Lord. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Thankful you are here. Praise God. God is faithful. Brought many back today that haven't been able to be here for quite some time. We just want to say we, uh, we want to welcome you back. Praise the Lord. We're thankful um, that you're here. I tell you, uh, it, we miss you when you're not here. I mean it. it, it you, you say, well, I don't know. Uh, we do. We really do. And so we're thankful that God has made a way. And I want to start this service off a little bit differently. Um, Sister Priest uh, is in the hospital right now. She she is battling a few different things. Talked with her yesterday. Haven't got a chance to speak with her this morning yet, but I plan to after service. But uh, let's just pray for her that God will do a miracle in her body, um, in in everything that she's going through right now. God is the fix-it man. Jesus is the fix-it man. And I believe he can reach down. Um, I also, my, my brother-in-law, Brandon, uh, Sister Crystal, um, they're, they're um, dealing with something right now um, with Salem. And we're believing uh, good for a good report and all those things. So we want to bind together with them. And then, uh, Jaden, this morning I felt like getting you a prayer cloth. Um, just felt that in my spirit, not to embarrass you or anything, but I'm just glad you're here. Um, and uh, we want to pray over these, and I know with everything going on, we want to use wisdom and all that. So if you will, uh, you stretch your hand this way. We ask the Lord to send his word only. Uh, these are not magical cloths, all right? These are what they did in the book of Acts. They took cloths and handkerchiefs and aprons from from Paul's body and they prayed and that was a contact of faith that's all this is and when we look at it it reminds us of the power that God has it's not power in this cloth it's power in Jesus Christ so let's pray to t t today with fervency with passion and let's see what God will do Lord we love you God we're thankful for you thank you Lord God for your mercy for your grace God thank you Lord that you have all power God, that you're in control of all things, that you do all things well. God, we trust you. We rest, God, in your power. We rest in your wisdom, Lord. We rest in your omniscience, God, your omnipotence, your, your ever-present, Lord. And we're thankful for that. God, we pray for those three needs that we mentioned today. God, for Brother Jaden, for Sister Priest, and, and, and Little Salem today. God, we stand on your word today. God, we declare... Lord, uh, healing. We declare, God, good reports. We declare testimonies, Lord, in the name of Jesus, of the, of the power of God at work in these lives. God, we love you, God. God, we recognize your power. We recognize that authority. God, you can send the word, and we ask you to do that today. Send the word and complete the work in the name of Jesus. God, we stand on it in the name of Jesus. We lift you up in the sanctuary. We lift you up in this place. God, hallelujah, you are faithful. You are faithful. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord for hearing us. Let's praise him for his answers to prayer. God, we thank you. You are ever faithful. God, you are perfect in all your ways. Thank you, Jesus, for the presence of God that I feel in this place. God, we thank you, Jesus, that you're a healer, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You've not forgotten about us and set us on the back burner somewhere, but God, we're on the forefront of your mind. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We're thankful for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send the word, Lord. Send the word. Hallelujah. Send the word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less. Hallelujah. 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 I'm thankful we have a God that we can go to. Hallelujah. I'm thankful we have a God that has all power and that is a healer. Oh, so grateful for that this morning. Praise the Lord. Young folks, come. We're going to sing a little chorus as they're coming. Stand still. If y'all know it, sing with me, all right?
His hand upon us. Never sleeps, does he? He's always busy. Hallelujah. Got a little course of a song I'd like to try this morning. Amen. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, I sing praises to your name. For your name is great, greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, oh your name is great and greatly to be praised. We sing praises to your name. sing praises to your name. Sing it out there. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. Yes, Jesus. 
and greatly to be praised we sing glory to your name oh yes we do oh lord glory to your name oh lord oh your name is great and greatly to be praised oh i'll sing glory to your name oh yes i will oh lord glory to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised i'll sing praises to your name <laughs> oh lord praises to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, we'll sing glory to your name. Oh, yes, we will. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, oh, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. I'll sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for oh, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Sing it out there again. Oh, I'll sing glory to your name. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. I'll sing glory to your name. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for oh, your name is great. And greatly to be praised as we sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be prayed oh we'll sing glory to your name oh yes we will oh lord sorry to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song. To him who said so, mercy's holy seat. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my 
everything and I will adore you. Hallelujah. Clothed in rainbows, live in color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing, honor, strength, and glory and power be to you, the only King. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing, Praises to the King of Kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. Breath the living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praises to King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Clothed in rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be. You are the only wise king. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praises the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and the living water. Such a marvelous mystery. Holy, 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 holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. He is worthy. He is worthy. He sits on the throne today. And I thought about the prayer request. I thought about Billy Cluster. And I thought about so many that we've been remembering but our God is on the throne. He's never lost a case, and he's power, all power. And I'm praying for these, you know, little Josh and this little leukemia he's been battling, and, and then little Salem, and there's other needs that's been brought up this morning. We serve a powerful God. He's to be acknowledged. He's to be worshipped because he's everything. He is the mighty king, and I appreciate him today. Hallelujah. Probably G again. Well, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. 
He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Can we praise him? Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, a lame man that sat outside the gates, begging arms of those who entered in. Then now Peter and John, they came upon him, the lame man expecting from them. A piece of silver and gold, now have I none, but such I have I give unto thee. Right then the Spirit of the Lord, as it touched the lame man, he cried, Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by those chains of darkness of sin, and I had no real peace of mind. Though my sins are red and scarlet, he washed in what he stole. He opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul does rejoice since I made him my choice. I got peace and joy on everything I need. Well, my name's been written down in the last book of life. I cry, look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by those chains of darkness of sin, and I had no real peace of mind. Oh, my sins are red as scarlet. He washed in what he stole. He opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul does rejoice since I made him my choice. I got peace and joy and everything I need. Well, my name's been written down in the land book of life. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, a lame man that sat outside the gates, begging arms of those who entered in. Well, now Peter and John, they came upon him, the lame man expecting from them. Well, Peter said, silver and gold, now have I none, but such I have I give unto thee. That then the Spirit of the Lord, as it touched the lame man, he cried, look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. 
Give it up, me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by those chains of darkness of sin, and I had no real peace of mind. Though my sins are red as scarlet, he washed in white as snow. He opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul does rejoice since I made him my choice. I got peace and joy and everything I need. Well, my name's been written down in the last book of life. I cried, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by those chains of darkness to sin, and I had no real peace of mind. Though my sins are red as scarlet, he washed in white as snow. He opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul does rejoice since I made it my choice. I got peace and joy and everything I need. Well, my name's been written down in the last book of life. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Just in time, I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, a lame man sat outside the gate that day, begging alms of those who entered in. Well, now Peter and John, they came upon him, the lame man expecting from them. Well, Peter said, silver and gold, now have I none, but such I have I give unto thee. Right then the Spirit of the Lord, that touched the lame man, he cried, look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by those chains of darkness of sin, and I had no real peace of mind. Oh, my sins are red as scarlet. He washed in white as snow. He opened up my blinded eyes. Well, my soul does rejoice since I made him my choice. I got peace and joy and everything I need. Well, my name's been written down in the last book of life. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, church. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you how it was for me. I was bound by those chains of darkness of sin, and I had no real peace of mind. Oh, my sins were red as scarlet. He washed in white as snow. He opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul does rejoice 
since I made him my choice, I got peace and joy and everything I need. Well, my name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come and help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Oh, he has done great things. Praise God. Thankful that we serve a God that has power. Yeah. We, we serve a God that shows up for us right. when we need him. I'm so grateful for that. Can you raise your hands Woo. across the house? Let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When we look back on our life, Lord, where we've been, where you brought us from, God, we can raise an honest praise from our hearts even when we look to what we're going through now you're still greater than that god you're a perfect god a god that shows up when we need you to i give you honor this morning give you honor this morning praise the lord praise the lord if you're still standing won't you stretch your hands toward heaven let's pray for sister beardsley this morning she needs a touch in her body uh, let's uh, DJ and Nancy Nancy Beardsley. Let's pray for her yeah. together right now. Lord, we love you, God. We're thankful, Lord, that you are a healer. God, for Sister Nancy right now, God, will you touch her body? God, would you perform a miracle? God, where when we walk away from it, when she walks out of the doctor's office, Lord, whatever it might be, God, that she walks out yeah. singing the praises to the King of Kings, that she'll be able to sing that song with a new testimony. Look what the Lord has done. In the name of Jesus, God, you're able. Touch her. God, for Billy and Adrian right now, for Joshua Eastman, Lord, you're able for sistership, brothership. God, you're able. God, won't you do a miracle, God? Won't you do it today? God, we rest in you today. God, you do all things well. You do all things well. Healing, yeah. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. They're not here, but God, you can reach to where they are. Send the word, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're faithful, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He has done great things. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you for pressing this morning, worshiping the Lord. I tell you, I tell you, praise the Lord. Sister Naomi, don't ever be embarrassed about your praise. God brought you. He brought you through. If people knew what you have been praising through, huh? If people knew, God's faithful. God's faithful. Hallelujah. 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 God's faithful. Thank you, Jesus. If, if, if folks knew, but God knows, and he looks down and he's pleased. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got a lot of friends who are going to be worshiping an idol today on their TV. They're going to jump around their, their living room. Uh, they're going to cheer each other uh, with their beverages of choice. But I tell you what, there's nothing better than to sing praise for right. than Jesus Christ. Nothing better. I'm thankful for him. Praise the Lord. Oh, so grateful. So grateful for what God has done. He has done great things. Praise the Lord. I got this newsletter in the mail. I'll, I'll post it on the whiteboard in the lobby. Um, it's from Brother Jeff and Sister Jama Eastman there in the Dominican Republic. And it has pictures of the roof 
that our church helped put put on that church down there. There's just something made in my heart. It's not it's not pride. It's just I'm thankful for how God has allowed us to have a global reach, even down there to the Dominican Republic, a little church like this doing big things. And I'm believing in the next couple months we'll get some pictures of the of the next church that we paid for their electrical this month uh, to get rerun so their church won't burn to the ground, right? Uh, man, it's exciting what God is doing. 2022 is a year, and we're just going to go on through, huh? In this year, 2022 is where we'll get through. I'm believing God for greater miracles. And if he can help us reach down into Haiti at the Lloyd's Missions, and he can help us reach down into the Dominican Republic, and help support that ministry. And if we can reach down into Hodgenville, Kentucky, where Brother Zane Estes' ministry is based out of, and we can help get the gospel out through that method, and we can reach down into Seneca, Missouri, and we can sow into Brother George Davis's evangelism ministry, I'm telling you, we, we've got tendrils now reaching around the country, around the world, and I'm believing as 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 we grow, as our, uh, as our finances continue on, as God has blessed them, we're going to keep reaching out into this world. For the, We know Jesus is coming soon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, folks in here that are parents of, uh, of teenagers, uh, I ask you to look on that board on your way out of church today. There is a, a youth uh, retreat or winter or something. Uh, down there in Olean, forgive me, but you can look up on, on the board. You'll find it. It's in Olean, Kentucky. They've rented out a big church, and they're going to have a lock-in. And and uh, so check out the dates on that. I believe it's the 22nd of February, but uh, check out the dates on that. Try to get your kids um, to that. And, and we're already looking forward um, to the summer. Amanda and I have been just talking about some things. And, and Camp Blessing is the third full week of july that's what we'll be going to this year so uh, if you can get your kids prepared for that uh, get yourselves prepared for that and uh and uh, i want the church to pay the way for the kids so they'll just be responsible for spending money um but but we're gonna we're gonna sow into our children that way um, brother randy snow is preaching the night services and i don't know who's preaching the days um yet so anyways, be thinking of that, um, praying towards that way. And I'm sure there's something else. But remember, prayer meeting, 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Um, we 2020 prayer is what uh, I've stolen from another church. But just trying to get 20 people here for 20 minutes to pray for the vision of God, for our church to be accomplished. Uh, remember, in 2022, we, our church, we want to become a people of prayer where we lean on God. We want to become a people of progress where we get closer to God, longing for more of God. And so that's our heart. We're going to move forward in our in our upreach, uh, Bible reading and praying, fasting um, and, and all those things. And then we're going to become a people of provision where we we have leaned on God. We've longed for more of God and we're going to love each other. Praise the Lord. That's not just folks in the church. We get our eyes on ourselves and we become stagnant and don't grow but we want to reach out into our community be praying about that and that's where we move forward in our outreach not just our upreach towards God but our outreach towards others all right so anyways uh, we we've we've got some invite cards out there in the foyer if you want to grab a couple on your way out invite some folks to church we've got tracks um, ordered and we're trying to get an assortment out there where you can grab one or two and and make a goal to hand out one or two tracks a year to somebody that needs Jesus. All right. And if you give it to somebody and they don't they already know Jesus, that's all right. They can hand it out. You just challenge them. Hey, you give it out. I'll get more from church. All right. We want the gospel to go out. We want to build God's kingdom, not our own. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He has done great things. Remember, as we've requested prayer for folks, um, remember to continue to pray for them. I'm going to try somehow to get, I don't believe they're letting people in to see Sister Priest, but um, I'm going to try to get this prayer cloth to her. And, and um, 
remember to pray for her. Amanda and I are going to try to go see Billy and Adrian this afternoon. Uh, we have to be very careful. They're being very cautious because of the treatments he's undergoing. So we kind of stand at the bottom of the steps and holler up to him. And they, they, uh, it, it's hard to be understood. Uh, just, but anyways, uh, th- just with that. So be praying for them as you will, brother and sister ship. Be praying for uh, them that God will heal and, and God will make a way where sister ship can get to church. That's uh, get healthy enough in her body where she can. She longs to be here. I talked to her a couple times this week. And, uh, and she's a blessing, Brother Scott. I know you know that. You're blessed. Um, but she's been a blessing to me, encourages me when I'm on the phone with her. That's not how it's supposed to work. I'm supposed to encourage her. But, um, but anyways, remember to keep praying. Joshua Eastman, continue to pray for him. Thankful for the turnaround that's happened in his life. But continue to pray. God will bring him all the way out in June or what May, whenever that all that stuff has taken hold and bone marrow transplant or whatever it is and when he gets out he'll just continue to get better and better and better and when we'll see him someday here in our church and we'll get to shout and praise God for what he's done for that little boy that's what I'm believing for praise the Lord praise the Lord grab your Bibles if you will turn with me to second Kings thank you musicians Taylor if you would take that picture and uh Actually, just put it right here and then take that blanket and lay it over the altar. Praise the Lord. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Brother Mike, for pushing like you did. We need it. We need to push and to praise God, not just to go through the motions. Praise the Lord. It's all right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Buzzy was here. I was going to have him drop that that blanket from the ceiling. He always figures out neat ways to do stuff, but he's not feeling well. So remember to pray for him today. God will touch his body. Uh, Lord will touch that knee of his too. Um, anyways, Second Kings chapter number two, and I I I, I want to preach something that might be a little different um, than normal fare, I guess which might be welcome at this point, but I want to preach something that uh, God has put on my heart quite some time ago, and then um, in prayer, um, I feel this, uh, that I should deliver this this morning. Um, 2 Kings 2 and verse number 1, and we're going to read quite a few verses here today, but I would that you keep your Bibles open, and we're going to flip to to, uh, another chapter in 2 Kings. And... um, and then we're going to allude to another story. But And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today. And he said, yeah, I know it. I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho, and the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. 
and, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophet which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The Spirit of God doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. We'll stop reading there. Uh, I encourage you to open your Bible this afternoon and read this chapter uh, as, 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 a, as a total and see all the things that God has done. I'll stop reading just for sake of time this morning. But this is a, a story of a, a servant, really. It's a story of a servant. I want to preach that thought this morning, the tale of two servants. And by tale, I don't mean a, a fable, but just a story of two servants, a tale of two servants. I, I don't know if you remember high school enough to remember how a tale of two cities begins. It was the best of times, and it was the worst of times. That's probably the only book I can remember the opening from, uh, except maybe the Bible. But uh, th there is something powerful about that very opening statement. It almost hooks you in on what uh, this book is going to be about. I suppose that we could begin a, a tale of two servants with it was the best of servants and it was the worst of servants. Uh, it, 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 I root as a as a somebody born in Cleveland, Ohio, at the at the I, I forget what the name of the Hopkins maybe hospital there in Cleveland, Ohio. I can't help but root for the underdog. Uh, that has been my lot in life as a sports fan is to root for the underdog every since uh, I can remember my team has been losing. All right, whether it was they were good enough to get to big games and lose, which wasn't even that big, but they would get to big games and lose. There's the fumble. There's the uh, Jose Mesa uh, uh, grooving a fastball for somebody to hit and for us to lose the World Series. And my little, uh, however old I was, 11-year-old heart was broken and, and crying at the television. I'm not kidding. Uh, my, my wife, I, we don't have a, a television in our home but, but when the Cavs were good a few years ago and they got to the finals and they got to the seventh game of the finals, I had my phone out. I don't know if I should mention this stuff while we're going out live here, but I had my phone out and I was just watching the play-by-play -play that one of those sports networks gives, and it'll just read out to you, say, ball, ball blocked by so-and-so, Cavs ball. And, and I, I remember uh, watching that. I'm just telling you, this is... Probably not the most spiritual thing. It's not the most spiritual thing. But as I watched and I said, Manda, we were laying in bed. It was dark. And all the glow of that phone was lighting my face. I said, Manda, Manda. And she goes, what? And I said, the Cavs just won the championship. And she rolled over. She's like, great. You know, great. I'm not kidding. I had tears rolling down my face. And she goes, are you serious? Like that, I said, you don't understand the 35 years of my life of what I've been through. <laughs> you don't understand. Are you serious? I'll never forget that. And that's why men don't like to show emotion, Brother Mike. But anyway, uh, that, that uh, affected me. I've always rooted for the underdog. When I read about Elisha's life, when I read about his life, I, get, I feel like Elijah gets all the props. Well, us preachers talk about, oh, the contest on Carmel. And he was a great man. I'm not negating that. But there was a, there was a servant that was serving the great man that, that had done great things. He did double the amount of, of miracles that his master did. Um, that's what the Bible says. And it was the last one, the 28th one, I believe it was, was in his death. He was in the, he was in the ground. And they dropped another dead body into that tomb or sepulcher because they saw raiders coming over the hill. And he had enough of God on him in his lifetime that when that dead body touched those dead bones, he came back to life and was seen by others. He came back to life. There was a power that was involved in Elijah's life. And I believe this story right here is why there was a power in his life. 
You see, this story that we read for our text today, it proves that Elisha, or yes, Elisha was a servant that was faithful. Verse number 3, it says, As the Lord liveth, as, the, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. He was attached to the man of God. He was attached to him. He said, no matter what's coming that we're going to face, I'm not leaving you till I have to. I'm not leaving you till I have to. His not leaving didn't start in 2 Kings chapter 2, our text today. It started in, in, in 1 Kings chapter 19. Now, when, when he was walking, walking his oxen through the field, plowing, and Elijah comes by him with the mantle, and God told, that's the next one. That's who I want you to call, uh, I want you to give the call to. And as he walks past him, he lets his mantle brush over him. And he says to Elijah, wait a second, man. Wait a second. Let me go tell my family goodbye, and I'll come, and I'll follow you. And Elijah says, oh, what's it to you? I don't, what's it to me? I don't care. Do whatever you want. Elijah, just a, the paradigm of a sensitive man, right? I don't care what you're doing. Do whatever you want. And, and so uh, Elisha goes back to his family. He tells them goodbye. And then what does he do? The Bible says that he takes the, the yoke, the, uh, the plowing implements, and he breaks them. And he puts them on, he kindles a fire, and he kills a a yoke of oxen, and he offers them to the Lord. You know what that was a symbol of? I'm not going back to the family farm. He was telling his daddy and his mom, he's saying, I'm not going back to the family business. I have a calling from God that's more important than what uh, you guys have for me here. Don't take any, any kind of offense to that, mom and dad, but I'm showing you right now and I'm purposing in my heart that I'm not coming back here, that I will follow God with all of my heart. And so Elisha is a characteristic of faithfulness or shows characteristics characteristics of faithfulness he was a servant that was faithful secondly he was a servant that went further verse number seven 50 men sons of the prophet stood to view afar off and they were watching they stayed there and the two the prophet and his servant went up to the river they, they smacked the water, or Elijah smacked the water, called on God, and the water rolled back, and they crossed on dry ground. The 50 saw it from afar off, but, but it was Elisha that was there with the prophet. You hear me? It was Elisha that was there with the prophet. He was a servant that went further. Going further, let Elisha experience miracles the spectators never got to experience. I remember when V.J. Malhar He's such a, a, a great young man. Uh, he went to Figby, Free Gospel Bible Institute, and they came through. And, and he, he, uh, he prophesied to me and Amanda. Lay, had some of the ladies in the church lay hands on Amanda. He didn't know that we had had, uh, uh, she had had a couple miscarriages. He didn't know that she was going through a broken heart. I was holding my nephew at the time, Logan. He was about Lincoln's age as he runs across the church there. He was about Lincoln's age. I was sitting up on the stage holding him during altar call, and he came up to me perplexed, and he said, Brother, in his, in his English, that he has that very distinctive, he's a super intelligent man, a very distinctive way of talking to him. Brother, brother, is this your child? And I said, No, this is my nephew. I thought he's just being friendly. And he goes, Okay, and he just walks away. And I thought, Well, there we go. That was our conversation. Uh, he, he comes back. He says, Put him away, put him away, come, come. And he grabs me, and I just put uh, Logan down, and I'm looking for my brother or sister, and, they, and, and I follow him across to my wife. And, and, and he calls out, and he says, hey, I want you to know, I, I, I want you to know what God just told me. And he gets, uh, I think it was Sister Bev Hacker, maybe Sister Holt, I can't remember, to lay hands on Amanda's uh, belly. And they started praying, and he said, uh, at, this, at this time or something like this, Next year, you will have a son. He had no idea 
no idea what we had just went through. He had no idea uh, the feelings that were in our heart, the struggle that was going on inside of us, uh, the struggle that was affecting even our, our spiritual lives. But he knew he had heard from God. I heard the stories as when he was called to preach in India. He would go to hospitals. And, and he, he was a real faith healer. He didn't pack them into auditoriums and fill up buckets full of money. He went to the hospitals. And he started praying for folks. And folks were getting healed in those hospital wards. Uh, but Brandon has stories about being in Figby with him. Brother Kevin Holcomb told me he was the dean of men at, the, at that time. And I was talking to him about VJ. And he says, brother, he goes, I, I do dorm inspections every night. I've been his dean for a couple years. And he goes, I, every night when I come in, he said, I, I can't even remember, but to be safe, I'll say less than I can count on one hand. Has he not been praying in his room, calling out to God? There was something about him. And when, I, when he would tell those stories, I would think, oh, God, I want stories like that. I remember praying and asking God for stories like that, stories like Brother Zane tells. And I remember one, one specific time that I was praying those things, and he said, Said, I feel like the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, for you to have stories like that, you'll have to attempt things like they attempt. How can God show up for you all the time when you're sitting on your couch? Huh, Jeremy, you've got to go out and attempt something for God. And I'm telling you, the longer I serve God, the more that I try to do for God, I am seeing that He shows up and He provides my every need. He was a servant that went further. I want to go further for God. He was a servant that walked fearlessly. Or if I could say it this way, he was a servant that walked not faithfully, he was, but faith-filledly. I know that ain't a word either. I've been making them up a lot here lately. But he was full of faith when he walked. Full of faith. Can you imagine the feeling in his heart? I know he saw Elijah do the great things. Through God, God do the great things through Elijah. I know he saw those miracles, but can you imagine when he showed back up to Jordan? And he said, oh, this is where the rubber meets the road. That, that mantle had floated back down to him, and he folds it up. And he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Oh, where is he? Will you show up for me? There's others watching, but this is for me. And the, and the Lord parted the waters. For him as well. He was one that did it. I, I, I don't believe that he whispered, but he cried aloud. Where is the Lord God of Elisha? See, when the mantle of God's man fl floated back down to earth, the fire had not burned it up from the, the chariots of the fiery chariots, the fury of the horses had not turned it up. But Elisha looked down at the mantle and he knew when he picked it up he was accepting not just a mantle but a mission from God. He didn't wilt. He didn't wither under this responsibility but with a new determination and courage within him. He ripped his outer garment not in grief but in greater significance than just grief. It signified that he accepted the call from God. No longer was he to be the servant of the man of God. No longer the follower of the man of God. But I accept the calling to be the man of God. I accept that I might be the one that kings are trying to kill. Or I might be the one living on a mountain with ravens feeding me. Or facing the prophets down the prophets of the devil. I might be the one. Elisha, he stooped down and he took that mantle up. And he went back to the brink of Jordan and and though his master was gone, he knew on whom to call. He called on the God that his master served and that he served as well. I wonder, I, I love placing myself in Bible stories. It helps me understand them a little better. It, it, there's something powerful. I wonder what those, those men that had stayed, that stood afar off, the Bible says. I wonder if they were the ones looking at him and saying, oh, that looks like the mantle of Elisha, or Elijah rather. Huh? I, I wonder if they were thinking, who's going to fill his shoes? Who's going to be the, they were the one telling Elisha, hey, God's going to call him home today. They had enough faith to believe that. 
I want, who's going to fill his shoes, though? As they discussed that, and they were watching for signs from the heaven of what God might do, they're asking each other, who's going to teach us the word of God? Who's going to lead us in the ways of God? Who's going to be used by God to do mighty works? Maybe they were arguing like the disciples argued about who would get to sit on the right hand of God. Maybe they were the ones arguing, hey, hey, maybe I'll get the, I'll get the mantle next. Maybe this mantle that's sitting on me, boys, is going to be the mantle of power. Uh, maybe it'll be for me in this hour. But then across the Jordan, they espied some movement. They saw Elisha coming back. That looks like the mantle of Elijah, but that's not the walk of Elijah. That's the gate of, of, of Elisha. It looks different to me. What's going on here? And when the sons of the prophet in verse number 15 were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. They were at, to view at Jericho. They saw the second miracle of the water rolling back. They understood that that was God's stamp of approval on Elisha's ministry. And we need to understand something as I try to preach this tonight, today in a quicker way. But we need to understand that Elisha, he started as a servant with a calling. Verse number uh, 11 of 2 Kings chapter number 3, Jehoshaphat seeking something. He says, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king's of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Elisha washed the hands of Elijah. Elijah, Elijah had dirty hands from time to time. That is a heavy bowl. My goodness. Huh? He washed the hands. He washed the hands. It was important. His job was to, to keep, we know a lot about uh, cleanliness now, especially in the last two, two years. Uh, how many of you sing to yourself the happy birthday song when you wash your hands? Just me? Uh, all right. I, uh, say happy birthday to me, right? You're supposed to sing it through twice, and you've washed your hands enough, right? Everybody, you listening, boys? You listening? Huh? Well, you sing it, you sing it, and you soap your hands up. It's important. We know that that keeps different things uh, and I know it's not perfect, and it's not a miraculous force field around you, but it does help, right? He washed the hands of his master. It, it is. So, I, I was working, and I, I don't know what everybody in here does, so please don't take this as a, but, but I worked as a, a janitor. They called me a maintenance supervisor at a public school in, in uh, Bullock County, Kentucky. I really liked that job until we hit flu season. Uh, I was the daytime janitor, and, and really, I didn't understand. I would buff the floors before I was there at 6. Before everybody got there, I wanted to make sure my floors looked good, and I'd buff the floors, and, and I'd go through and make sure my, my, the, my employees at night had done their job and checked all the bathrooms, make sure it was all clean. But, man, there was something. Uh, we had a flu bug come through, and this is before everybody stayed home for everything, right? And we had a flu bug come through, and I remember one lunch, I had a, a walkie on my on my hip, and it, uh, they called me Mr. Jeremy. Mr. Jeremy, we, we got to clean up on aisle cafeteria. They they just had a good time with it. I didn't, but I was like, all right. I knew what that meant. And a little child had gotten sick. I'll just say it that way so nobody gets sick in here. Uh, had gotten sick in the cafeteria, and I, I cleaned that mess up. And and those of you who knew me before then knew how weak my stomach was. But the Lord had a sense of humor because I went to be a plumber and then a janitor. And those two things broke me. I can, I can eat my dinner in about any situation now. But, but I tell you, as, as I was mopping it up and then I cleaned it up, it was nice and, and sanctified, right? Sprayed all that strong cleaner. I was wheeling out of the cafeteria and I heard a child behind me. And I turned around. I, it, I'm not kidding. It was, it was, I believe it was four before I could get out of the cafeteria, but it was at least three. And, and one of the ladies in the front office, she's my favorite co-worker there, she came up and she called the man's name who did it before I worked there, and, and she said, you know, Mr. So-and-so, he did this for 30 years. This was my first year doing it, and I looked at her, and I said, he was a humble man. That's all I could think to say. 
He was a humble man. There, it, it was break. God broke every bit of pride that was in me in Louisville. I tell you in every which way. I'll tell you more stories as you as you come here. Hear me preach, I guess. But man, as I was cleaning that up, I thought, oh, he was a he was a humble man. I had never thought about that before until in the moment when there's 150 people in that cafeteria watching me. People with degrees. I had a degree too. Uh, people with degrees watching me clean it up. I'm like this is this is humbling. This is humbling. God was doing something. I'm not complaining about that. I'm thankful for that job. It was a wonderful job for our family. But but I thought that that God was showing me you've got, you've got to humble yourself. You've got to humble yourself. He did that at the church too as a youth pastor there. You've got to humble yourself. You can't come out uh, of a flaming revival in northern Ohio where everything went your way. It's not going to be like that all the time in ministry. You've got to learn some things. God was humbling me. Elijah was a man. Elisha, rather. That's so hard, Brother Elijah. To keep him. But Elisha was a man that served his master for six years, washing his hands. His, he was found with, was it 12 yokes of oxen, Brother Dean, in that story? What, they were a wealthy farm. They were wealthy. They were doing great work. And he goes back, and now he's washing hands. He owned his own business, made good money. Now he's washing the hands of a man that don't know where his next meal's coming from. He humbled himself. This is a tale of two servants. The mantle did not fall upon Elisha's shoulders. It fell on the ground, and he chose to pick it up. He chose to pick it up. That's significant. It's significant. He had the choice of what to do. It didn't start with the, the double portion and the manna. It started with the water pitcher and a hand towel. Gehazi is the next servant of the prophet that we read about, wasn't it? It's a sad story when you really focus in on his life. I've always wondered about Gehazi, or at least I've wondered for quite some time. See, he was the servant of Elisha. I've always wondered, could there have been more for him than a legacy of servitude and sickness? See, we know the story. You Bible readers in here know the story of Naaman's healing. Go down seven times. Huh? A tree I don't even climb. He went to the water. He said, oh, this, there's better. And, and, and he gets healed by dipping seven times in the Jordan River. He comes back and he wants to give, give Elisha some great gifts. And he refuses it. Gehazi overhears, or he was there, and he goes in. He's, hey, boss, i got to step out for a moment. Chases down Naaman, that rich man, and he says, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll take a couple of talents. He's changed his mind. My boss has changed his mind. We'll take a couple of talents of silver, and we'll take two outfits. You see, Gehazi was confronted with almost the same choice, just in a different way. He was, he was confronted with the choice. Do you want the mantle or do you want mammon? Do, do, you, do you want God's anointing on your life? Or, or do, you, do you want your that two talents of silver, y'all? That ain't no joke. That's a lot of money. He, he, he was confronted with that. Whose shoes, Gehazi, do you want to feel? What mantle? He was picking up a mantle. But was it the mantle of God or was it the mantle of this world? I feel like Gehazi said, these shoes are too small for me. This picture, it's, it's, it's beneath me. He was me in that cafeteria uh, working on that fourth kid's lunch. That's gross. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. It's me. He was, Mr. So-and-so was a humble man. He was a humble man. See, Mr. Elisha was a humble man. He was a humble man. There have been times that I, I have battled discouragement. Huh? We, when we look out around here, by man's eyes, and this is no, no affront to anybody, but in man's eyes, we pastor here in between a, a dairy farm and a sheep pasture. Huh? We, we have our faithful neighbor. We love you, Mr. Gowie. Huh? We're thankful you're here today. 
our closest neighbor, and then the next closest one is out of sight down the road. Huh? It, it wouldn't be the place where you would pick. We went to an Assembly of God church yesterday in Batavia for a homeschool outing, and, and I thought, my goodness, I looked out of their parking lot where we parked, and there were apartments, right? I mean, a big old apartment complex. And I thought, Amanda, they have all these vans and buses right there. I'm like, they could just walk over there. They don't even need the vans and buses if they just got 10% of the people that lived in those apartments. It'd fill their sanctuary up. Huh? It, it, there's things that don't quite make sense. But here's, here's what I want to tell you. The, the mantle of God doesn't always make sense to man. The mantle of God sometimes looks like a water pitcher and, and a bowl. It looks like a, a water pitcher and a hand towel. See, the mantle of God sometimes can mean different things in our life. It can say, it can look like what Jesus said, not thy, my will, but thine be done. Uh, it, it can look like this doesn't make any sense. If God called me away from my father's business, why am I carrying a hand towel tucked in my belt and a pitcher around with me just to wash his hands after he fills his belly? I wonder if he ever got sick of hearing Elijah complain. Huh? We've, we read the few stories that we have about him, and almost every one is him complaining. I wonder if he ever got sick of that. But God had a purpose in it. He said there is miracles after the mantle. There's a double portion that you can have. I want to tell you that there are two servants. There are a choice to be one of two in every one of our lives. There's a choice. Are we going to pick up the mantle of God or are we going to pick up the mantle from this world? I, I read a quote this week, and I, don't, I wish I, could, I had it in front of me right now, but it, it said something about Moses. It said hey, Moses spent 40 years thinking he was somebody then he spent 40 years learning he was nobody. Then he spent another 40 years learning what a nobody could, uh, what could be done with a nobody if God got a hold of him. And, and, and I'm telling you, if God has to take us into the wilderness to teach us what he wants us to, when that hard, hardship hits us, and I know we don't like it, I know our flesh doesn't like it, but there's a choice that can be made in the middle of hardship, in the middle of carrying the towel and the water pitcher. There's a choice that has to be made. I will serve God. I will worship God. As I, as I listened to the worship this morning, and I looked out on the crowd, I thought, and that's why I said that, Sister Naomi. I thought, if people only knew. But there's a choice that you have to make inside of that, in spite of that circumstance that I will be the one that picks up the mantle. I will be the one that does what God asked me to do. See, the mantle is not comfortable because it was made to be durable. This mantle is not stylish. This one's not bad, but... The mantle that God offers is not stylish because it was made to be significant. When you see people that are on the forefront of fashion, huh, their, their clothes are out of style pretty quickly. Now, this mantle is not expensive, but it is very costly. Brother, Brother Brock, was it that preached the mantle message? That, that seems to be such a, su uh, such a linchpin for our family, that message. Uh, little did Amanda know when she went up and picked it up that you were up there holding it with her. And you didn't know it either. Huh? There, there is something about the mantle. we got to get that put on a DVD so I can watch it. But, but there's something about that mantle that God passes down. And I want to be honest with you this morning. And I'm not necessarily speaking about this church, but I am. But I'm speaking about most churches, probably all churches, but I've not been to all. But there are a, a church in church. There are there are two types of servants, and it seems like at times that churches are full of Gehazi's. They're full of people when confronted with a choice, money or mantle, they choose man, uh, money. Uh, when when confronted with the choice, calling or comfort, they choose comfort. I look at a lot of places around the country, and churches are struggling. They're struggling. I see it all over. I talk with different pastors, 
and, and, it, and it seems like uh, that, that pastors and their congregations are struggling with discouragement. The ministry and the laity alike are being attacked by the spirit of discontent. I preached on that a few months ago, and that still rings in my ears, that discontent that's in, the, in folks right now. And what it is, we've experienced great loss. Our comfort zone has been shaken. I know I'm preaching along this morning. Please give it to me. Give me, give me your attention. I, I'm sorry. And we've experienced great loss. Even our movement, the Holiness Pentecostal movement, we've lost great people. Brother Height, Sister Martin, Brother Gallagher, different ones. We've lost generals, it seems to be on. But I look in our area. I, I really do. I look in our area, and I see men that have been faithful, that, that aren't well known, uh, that have been faithful. Brother J.J. Brother, uh, Bailey, he's getting, God is blessing his ministry. They're seeing folks saved and, 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 and folks uh, drawn closer to God. He's preaching all over Indiana and Ohio and Kentucky, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. But he was here faithful for 30 years. Brother Ron Fraser, one of my mentors, Huh? He, he's such a unique man, a man that's in his 60s, but he's so driven, has such a vision, sees folks saved, and he loves on folks in his own way. Brother David Eastman pastors a little church in Smithport, Pennsylvania. That's his, his grandson that we pray for every service. But planted, uh, how many churches did we say a while back? 13 uh, or 31, something like that. I'm, I'm mixing the numbers up. But in the Dominican Republic, planted, planted uh, many churches there, many churches, and he's still providing for a work now. His son's there continuing that work on, expanding it. Uh, there, there are things, there are folks that might not ever get their name up in marquees. They might not ever get to preach. And if y'all probably don't know the names of some of these camp meetings, except me and Brother Mike, Brother Scott do. Huh? They might not ever get to preach Bristow. Uh, camp meeting. They might not ever get to preach down at Richlands. They might not ever get to preach these big names. But there's men that have been behind the scenes that nobody knows about that have been plowing and working the ground. What are they? They have chosen. I'm going to have an Elisha spirit in a world that wants to be Gehazi. I want to be that servant before God, even if it's six years and I'm still washing, uh, washing the hands, even if it's 60 years or 40 years in Moses' case, and I'm still in the wilderness. I want to be that servant of God. I want to be that one. You see, God had a replacement ready for Elijah. That's why I don't get all tore up when generals pass on. I'm sad about it. When Brother Gallagher passed away, I was I was. Literally sad. I have a pen he gave me in my office. It's special to me. I, I don't know. It's just a pen. Jesus loves you. And, and, and telling me, oh, it smacked me on the back. I preached pitiful there in, in, in uh, Granite City one time. And I got down done afterwards, and I was trying everything I could do just to make myself stay in the sanctuary and not go hide somewhere in the church after I finished preaching. And he smacks me on the back. Brother, you did a great job. I was sad. I was sad when he passed away. But guess what? God had a replacement for Elijah. He had somebody behind the scenes that nobody was giving credit to. They were kind of mocking him. Hey, your, serv- your, your master is going to be taken on. Telling him, hush your mouth. I don't want to hear it. Hush your mouth. I don't want to hear it. Kept saying that over and over again. God has a replacement for these generals that have gone on. God's not done moving. If we're still here, if the Spirit of God is still here, you can be the next one. That's what I'm saying. You can be the next one. It might not look like what you want it to look like, but if it's doing what God has called you to do, that's what matters. That's what matters. You see, Gehazi was a servant that compromised. He covered up, and he caught what the world had. Ended up with leprosy. He caught what that man had. Instead of curing what the world had like his master did, uh, he caught what it had. What was that? He got so cozied up to what his flesh wanted. Instead of asking God, God, what can you do with me? Man to come. I preached way too long here this morning. I think about it often. About 
different different pastors in our movement, they'll they'll talk about oh so and so had we we uh, we lost so and so in our church, and, and uh, they were very active in the gifts. We were we uh, saw one church talked to the, with their pastor, and he had lost three or four ladies in their church, older ladies in their seventies and eighties, when they died. And he said, man, it, it's, it, it's getting where we don't even have a message in tongues and interpretation very often anymore. So he started preaching to the younger generation. It ain't just for the 70 and 80 year olds. Uh, it, it, it's for you too. Uh, I've seen God use children in the gifts. And, and it, it was an amazing thing. Now when we go back there, now the gifts are active again. And it's young people being used in the gifts. What, we, we get these things in our mind that God has to move through this person or this way. But I'm telling you, it's, it's a tale of two servants in our lives. Which servant will we pick? I want to ask you that today. As you look inside of yourself, if, if the mantle fell down, I know, I know we're not in the Old Testament, but it was a, a true story uh, inspired by God. If the mantle fell down to you, would you carry it on? Would you carry it on? I want to. I, I know. I get kind of self self conscious sometimes when I preach this way too many services in a row. I need to. I need to. Uh, I need to encourage people. But you know what? Edification is building up the church. There's nothing more building up than saying, "Will you be the one?" I sought for a man among them that would that would make up the head that would that would stand. In the gap. I saw and I could find none. Then I said, here I am, Lord. <laughs> he took a coal off the altar. Said, God touched his lips. Something powerful about that. I'm telling you, God is no respecter of person. He's placed a choice between before all of us. It might We might all have different giftings, but God has a work for you to do. Stand with me, if you will. Thank you for your patience, your extreme patience this morning. Lord, we love you. God, we're so thankful for you, thankful for your word. God, I pray that you would minister and move during this altar call. God, that you would show us areas in our lives, those Gehazi moments in our lives, those Gehazi areas in our lives where, oh, yeah, we're still the servant, but maybe there's a sneaking spirit on us. Where when the prophet's not around, when we think no one's looking, we're sneaking and doing things that we should not be doing. Uh, we're choosing the mantle of this world more over the mantle of God. Pray, God, that you would stir us and that you would draw us to a place. God, where we're honest with ourselves and where we're honest with you and say, God, will you move in my life? God, will you move in my life? Make me a servant like Elisha. Make me one that will carry it on, that will carry the mantle on. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, won't you find a place to pray? I invite you up to this altar this morning. Won't you bow your knee before God and say, God, there's some areas where I've been choosing other things over you. But today, Lord, I'm making a, a vow to you. I'm going to change that. I'm going to put you first in my life. I'm going to put your things first in my life. I don't care what others think about me. I don't care what this world has to say about me. God, I want to please you and you alone. Stir us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus.
going to rise up? Who is going to rise up? Rise up unafraid to speak the truth. Who is going to stand within the gap and make up the hedge of holiness and truth oh who is going to rise up who is going to rise up rise up unafraid to speak the truth who going to stay within the gap and make up the hedge of holiness and truth who is going to rise up oh who is going to rise up rise up unafraid to speak the truth oh who is going to stand within the gap and make up the hedge of holiness and truth who is going to rise up going to rise up rise up unafraid to speak the truth oh who is going to stand within the gap and make up the hedge of holiness and truth up the hedge of holiness and truth who is going to stay within the gap who is going to stay within the gap oh, who is going to stay within the gap and make up the hedge of holiness and truth.